Recording is on. So we were just talking. Jesse has been thinking through some things for the media browser for plenty. So that's the idea of being able to manage assets like images and PDFs and that kind of thing. Uh, he, he's been working on just a proof of concept of some Go code to produce some JSON in order to make this work. So it's not visual right now, but he's thinking through maybe the technical strategy on, on some things. So Yeah, so I'll share my screen once I <laughs> get the other screen off again. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. While you're doing that, I've been working on a couple of different things. Just like I moved the the publish button into a, a general um, place, so now we can publish from both the code editor and the visual editor. Um, I I tried, well, I didn't try very hard, but I started thinking about like how a reset might work in terms of like yeah. clearing changes. Um, and I have some questions for you on that because I I hit yeah. like a thing that's confusing to me, but maybe you can help me with that. So. Um, We'll, we'll do that in a second. Let's yeah. take a look at the media stuff first. Let's see this. So I modified the assets copy, copy uh, file. So Jesse, I see myself right now. I don't know. Oh, oh yeah. Just that. I only search the browser. Ah. Um, can you see it now? Um, or did it bug oh, again? It bugged, I think. Yeah. I'll rejoin. OK. is on i'm here again yeah can i see it now yes i can thank you uh, yeah. can, can you bump up the size at all is that yeah i can ah sweet thank you so here's the difference that i made uh was it four days ago yeah mm -hmm. uh, for my look um for my like fork uh-huh plenty Sure. So here's an index of copied assets. So it's an array of all the file names that's in the assets folder. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, yeah, it's in the copy assets from project. There's no separate function for it, but I think. Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense to kind of leverage what's already there. But... Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't have to do the same thing again yeah because it goes through all the files recursively here mm -hmm. so why not just use this so yeah it happens every asset path to the index and mm -hmm. then creates json json file from it okay to the spa folder spa assets index to json yep perfect I think that the SPA folder is used for all the JavaScript and so on. Yeah, basically. Use. Yeah, I don't know if it was the best name, but yeah, basically, yeah. If it's not like a an HTML, um, then I've been putting everything in there. But yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay, and then we can use this index to basically start thinking about how we'd actually pull in like a display and that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. It. Lists all the file files that are currently in the site mm -hmm. assets folder. So we could list them all and uh, apply some actions to it to them, or replace them, or delete, or whatever we could do with the files. Yep. Actually, yep. I'm... Yeah. I was yeah, thinking that makes all the. It should be should be should it be accepted to delete uh, some of the files that are actually required by the team? Not, huh. not, the, not actually the team, but uh, this only is only from the project. But for yeah, required by the project. So yeah. if the image, for example, is hard coded, then if it should. It breaks the site site if it's removed. Yep. That. Yeah. So, so that's a great question. Uh, I was thinking about that too. So, 
so on the site that I'm working on um, right now, like there, there's the concept of like theme files and then user up, up, uploaded files and managed files, right? So it's like your your main logo and your header is like a theme file, right? Yeah. But then someone like uploading a picture for a blog post is is like user content, right? So I've been putting everything into a lib folder um, inside of uh, uh, the assets folder, just like a, a name that I just picked. Um, oh. Like their their library basically is what is what I was thinking, and then again, so it's it's hard. Like I'm try it's I'm always trying to find this balance between making the system as flexible as you want it to be to do whatever you want. Like to say, you know, your data structure can be whatever. You can put whatever in your assets folder. And you can yeah. put subfolders, but also allowing for this user experience where you're considering things like that. And yeah, these are challenges. It also like um, you know, like a lot of systems like uh, CMS systems, right? Like they have entity IDs for each of their files, right? So if you're using wow. a file across many blog posts or something like that, and you yeah. delete it, it'll let you know that you're using it in many different places. So these are the questions wow. that, you know, I grapple with, right? So it's like, I I want plenty to be, to feel like you're editing just like simple text and images and like you're not, you know, like like Drupal, for instance, I do a lot of Drupal work and like anytime you, you change Drupal in any slight way, it has a tendency to just like break everything because it's, it's thinking of itself as software where it's like, it's very specific about what you're doing and where you're placing it and being proper. And I think WordPress kind of had it right where they're a little messier. And I, I think people have a lot of problem with that, like where you're just kind of like throwing things around and everything's kind of like not as thought out. But I almost feel like it, it just, it, it breaks more silently than intentionally, which I, I think a lot of engineers would cringe at. But I think an average person who's just trying to like make an update on the page, like they don't care about the, integrity of the entire system. They're just trying to change certain things. So I don't know. These are these are questions that we're gonna have to answer, right? Like, do, do we allow people to, to delete an image that is used across several different end endpoints, right? Like yeah. maybe, and then that will break it, right? Like they'll break those pages and they might not understand those consequences. So how do we find that balance? I, I don't know those answers, but it would be, I mean, it'd be cool if we could figure out where things are used and what they're doing, but it might be also pretty challenging too. Yeah, I think I was thinking that if we had a separate uploaded folder, then mm -hmm. we could, uh, that has all uh, just the uploaded files through the CMS. So mm -hmm. if someone puts assets to the assets folder, mm -hmm. they, they should not be deleted. Uh -huh. It's part of the code base, so to speak. speak. Yep. Uh, yeah. But the uploaded folder would be like, Fully user managed. Um, yeah, fully user managed. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That that's okay. So that's a good way to separate it, right? So like one, like if if you're the coder, then you're thinking, okay, my assets I can hard code into my templates, and those are safe. Mm -hmm. And then user upload, I have to account for those to be deleted. Um, yeah. That makes sense. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to have to think through exactly what what that experience would be like. And then again, I we probably won't ever have. Or may, well, I don't want to say it won't ever, but the, <laughs> like the entity tracking and that kind of thing. Like we, mm -hmm. it's unlikely, at least for a while, that we're going to track the usage of these files. Like if we do separate yeah. them up into like an uploaded, it's probably it gets complicated. Yeah, it gets complicated. And I'm just not sure. I'm not sure that's something that we have to manage. I think mm -hmm. I like the idea. Of, I think people think of websites these days, like a lot of the times, is like each page is kind of like a throwaway piece of content. And like most of my clients, they do not struggle with the idea that like oh i uploaded this like block that's used five places and i expect it to propagate they really just like they see something on a page and like i need to change this thing on a page and i think when you add too much structure around it sometimes you put up barriers to just like changing the visual thing that's on that page so i want to like find that balance and it's, it's super hard but um i think we'll get there yeah and actually i started something here i started mm -hmm. to do the ui but it's just empty file oh okay yeah because it cannot be loaded from the ejected. Oh yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that's. I really just fun. added a toggle for the media preference. Uh -huh. That's it. Okay. And yeah. yeah, and here's the generated index. Yep. Uh, assets index file. Yeah. So if there's only the logo file in the mm -hmm. assets folder, and it's actually this can be used directly as the git path for the oh for like the saving it's saving yeah 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 and if if we add the slash in front of the 
assets, then it can be used as a URL. Great. Yep. Uh, yeah. That makes sense. And and then like, so is there no way, and I guess this might be me being completely ignorant of browsers and how JavaScript works. Mm -hmm. Like there's, so I think, you know, obviously doing this pre-processing in Go is a performance thing that's going, you know, having an index will be faster, but is there any way to just like, I mean, yeah. we're not, we're not hiding these paths, right? Like we're not hiding our, our assets folder. Is there a way that JavaScript can just like gather these assets or is yeah. that just like, yeah. After I made this, I thought that, yeah, maybe we could use Git to uh, list all the files mm. in the assets folder, although they are, right. it's not matching, pro, uh, it should be matching the current deployment, but it yeah. might not. But yeah, it could get out like so. If you're doing media management and you're adding, like it's looking to the repository, which is behind, right? So that that makes mm -hmm. sense. But what about like pulling it from the browser itself, yeah. right? Like there's theoretically an assets folder that can be traversed, yeah. but I don't know what that looks like. It has to have the server support support for it. Mm, okay. Yeah. Usually, HTTP servers, like yeah, there's an option to. Uh, show an index of files mm -hmm. when you go to the go to the folder URL. Yep. But it's usually not used because <laughs> there's a bunch of files that don't need to be shown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. index. I, I don't know. And it could be that the path is used by the site. Mm -hmm. like index, oh yeah, sure. Like, like a PHP site and then it's going through the PHP, PHP, like the index, index, index file, for example. Yeah. 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 Like all the, like, like all the, the CMS, PHP CMS is there. They're like generating those URLs. They're not like actually like file paths, but yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, There's no HTTP standards for indexing files. So it's, yeah. it just generates a HTTP page for the index and that's hard to parse. So mm -hmm. there's no really good way. Yep. To get the yeah. index of files from with HTTP. Yep. That makes sense. I mean, this this index, I, I think what you're doing here is is, is good then. I mean, mm. it, it should be, you know, Go is pretty fast at generating those indexes. Like we're already going through that. Like you're probably not adding much to the build time. Um so yeah, this this seems like a good method for thinking about this stuff. Um I'll have to think through don't, don't let me slow down. Keep keep exper experimenting with what you think is is best. I'll have to think through yeah. How I want to handle uh, theme assets versus user uploaded content. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm on the fence about that stuff. I have to. I'm. It's some of the, one of those things where I might have to see it and then and feel it yeah. to, to understand. And I I have a tendency to to try things and then break the API and change them. And that's that's the whole point of being in a pre uh, 1.0 release, right? Like we get to yeah. we get to change things. Um, so yeah, no, this is great. This is awesome. Uh, do you want do you want to take a look now at um, the question I had about resets and that kind of thing? Yeah, we could take a look at it. I already looked what you have done for the master branch, main branch. Okay, sweet. So, so you, you might already be aware of kind of what I'm... Yeah, I, I noticed there was a button for resetting. But <laughs> that doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't work. Yeah. yeah, so so this is... Oh yeah, so I'm, I'm logged in over here. Um, uh, and so for folks who haven't seen, you know, now we have the publish buttons over here on um, the visual editor as well as the code editor over here. Um, the code editor should actually be adjustable height now too. So like um, if you go to a longer example, they, they should be able to accommodate that. So, um, and also like these things before these were scrolling off the, the bottom of the screen. So this, this stuff should be a little bit updated. So now you can actually come and you know, publish and publish should generally work. Um, all these other widgets should generally work, but the, the problem here, and this is probably me being silly, but my understanding uh, is this. So I was thinking like, how do you do a reset? Right? Mm. So what I'm saying is, you come here and say new stuff and maybe you make a bunch of changes, right? You, you come through and maybe you update, you know, some other, other stuff. Right. And so you can see it on your, your UI, your UI is updating, which is cool. Um, but you decide like, Oh, I've done a lot of stuff and I really want to go back to what this was like before I started making edits. And so I was thinking, okay, well, do we like, you know, what, what, what is the source of truth of where this is coming from? And I thought, well, there's there's a pretty easy source of truth for this stuff. It's uh over here at um, oops. My thing's a little slow. Um, SBA 
ejected content.js, I believe. Is this yeah, so new, new content? Or this is old, old like a new, so, so this file. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So this file should have the old stuff, right? Like this should just, yeah. this should have the server loaded stuff. So like right here, these are these are browser based changes, right here, right. and this is server loaded. So this this should not have like um for instance, let's take a look at welcome to plenty, right? So if I come mm. back over here, welcome to plenty. So welcome to plenty. This is server loaded, and you're not going to see these real time updates, even though the content objects updating. So I mm. thought, okay, if we, you know, if we import our content JS file again. Um, and of course we, we import this as it, the all content prop. So this um, uh, is, is a full property that you can use on your site. But if we import it again, why can we not then use it as a reset button, right? So like, why don't we get original content from content JS? And then yeah. if it came down here, you could simply just do, hey, find in your original content, find where the file. And I, of course, I'm, I actually just added a new a new directive here called file path. So we didn't have that before and you're calculating the file path before. I, I, I updated yeah. that now. You don't have to do that anymore because yeah, I added sure. this. Yeah. Okay. Um, so so there is a file path now. So this would change the file path instead of file name. I just wanted to test it out. And so if you find, you know, if the current file you're editing, uh, this file, which is the home page, the index file, if that mm -hmm. equals the file path of what you're getting here, then just reset the original content um, from, from the, uh, the, the thing you're importing. However, original content updates. And I'm confused yeah. by this, but maybe you have a very... Yeah. Um, it, does that make sense to you? Am I confused? Yeah. It makes sense. JavaScript objects work like that. They mutate the original object instead of copying it. You have to do a deep copy of the object if you want to like, have the old object as, as is. So you're thinking like way over here in... Um, let's see if I can get to in main.js when I'm when I'm first making um, content the content yeah. prop here and I'm and I'm getting from uh, get content from uh, the all content uh, import yeah. that I did that that mutates it uh, no that doesn't mutate it uh, using the editor mutates the content object that's actually exists or there's multiple references but uh, it yeah. exits in originally in the uh, all content J JS module. Okay, because so yeah, I know we're so I knew we're binding the the content prop, but that that still that still ties to the all content prop because it comes from that. That's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, oh. it just references to the same obje object. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Interesting. And okay, so, so yeah, that's reimporting the, or importing the module, the all content module doesn't actually load it again. It, it's mm. just the same module. It has state. Like okay. it's, it, it has the same state as from, from all, all the lifespan of the page. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Cause I mean, that's exactly what I'm seeing. So basically what's happening here is this reset is working, but what it's doing is it's setting it to the new, you know, the same value because the, the yeah. all content object has this value now for title um, and reset is just setting it to the same value that's already there. So, mm -hmm. so that's not working. So I don't know. I mean, the reset button, I'm not going to get too hung up on this. It's not super important right now. I thought it'd be a nice to have it. Is there a different way that we could be approaching this that makes more sense. Yeah. It's actually quite easy to fix. We mm -hmm. just need to copy the object. Okay. And when what, is, what does that look like? Content in the get content function, we could copy the object. Over here. Oh, way, way in the very beginning in, in the yeah. um, main file. Okay. Like it, in the get content function, mm -hmm. we could use. Uh, oh, okay. There's. Yeah, this kind of. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's a little bit, a lot, but. Or um, after it, we could also. Yeah. Just, just like, was it the object? We could use object assign or object. Uh, was there a clone, object clone? Okay. In JavaScript. Okay. And okay, that, that makes sense. Clone. Yeah. Well, now that I know that, I can I can use that to to correct this. Um, yeah. yeah, I wasn't sure what was going on there, but cool. So that, that's an easy fix. Um, well, easy enough fix. Uh, awesome. So yeah, so yeah, I think, you know, um, 
that's where I was at with this this stuff here. Um, I was also thinking through like the ad um, information here. So like, mm. I, I, so I was thinking through like I've been thinking through paths and URLs in general. So um, the idea, uh, as, you know, yeah. at first I was like, okay, how do we set these paths? And I really think that it comes back to the path is there's all this metadata that sits on every page object, right? So mm. there, like every page has a potential pager. It has a content type. It has a, it's URL path that is generated. It now has a file path. This is the, the new one that I was talking about. So it has the file path right. and the file name, and then it has fields, right? So I would say fields is, is the data. This is user data that people think about adjusting themselves. Everything else is kind of like metadata that's really available for Plenty's purposes mainly, right? So um, I was thinking, okay, so if we're setting paths, before I was like, well, how do we set a path when we're creating new content here? And I don't think that is the job of new content. So new content, you should be able to set a file name, but when you choose, so basically you're going to choose what type it is, which is going to determine the first part of this file path. So this isn't really something that you're going to edit or set. And the only thing you can really change, you can't change the path either because this is something that you are doing in your plenty.json site configuration where you're overriding paths. So you're not really doing that here either. What you're really yeah. doing is you're setting the file name. So I yeah. think think what we're going to do is you, you come to add and then add is going to collect all the different types. In this case, we have a few, we have blogs and pages. That's basically it, right? So um, in this particular starter site, you would have two options, blogs and pages, and then you would have the option to set the file name, and then that's and then you can set fields, right? But that's when you start creating the content. Um, so this is really the only metadata that the user is going to be able to adjust. And what I was thinking is like, well, how would someone start adjusting paths? It's like, well, we have a we have a mechanism for that. So you in your data source, you can create a key called URL or path or whatever the heck you want it to be, and then you can set a path override. And then in your plenty.json file, you can basically um, use that as the path. So for instance, that would look like this. Just I think you're aware of this, Jesse, but in case other people are not. So if I was looking at my site-wide configuration, plenty.json file, what I would do is if I wanted to have my path be something that a user can edit, I would change it from these hard-coded metadata values, like file name, and I would use fields and then whatever my variable is. So maybe I'm going to call it path, or maybe I want to call it URL or, or, or whatever it may be. So you would basically set the override there um, and then when you're creating your content, you're still only creating the, the field name, uh, sorry, the, the file name. And then you're setting, you'd have a path key in here to actually set your path. Um, and then the generator can work as normal. You're not thinking about it from a metadata standpoint. You're thinking at it from a, a, a data yeah. standpoint. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. So I guess that leads me to the question. I, I probably, is it helpful at some point? And I, I know you're working on media, so don't worry about getting bogged down in this right now. I just, uh, I like to use your brain when I can. Um, mm -hmm. So I wonder if it makes sense to add to the environment.js um, file. So there's an m.js file that has a few pieces of, uh, I thought it was. Not, it's not in the attracted folder. Oh, uh, it's not? Okay. Um, let me see here. Let's see if I use my file browser real quick. Oh no! I stopped my I stopped my server. Ah. I think that's the problem. Um, let's uh, let's get out of this and let's start up our server again. And let me reload this. We're in here. I think it's I think it is in, injected. What or was it in global? Oh yeah, it's it's, it, because this yeah. gets generated. And I'm actually here's another thing I'm going to change. Not that this is not that important. So I know I I think I might change it ejected to core. I wonder if that makes it a little more. I, I know yeah. we're ejecting it, but what what are these files? They really are kind of like core mm -hmm. files. Yeah, this is a little side note for for you. Um, yeah. But I, I wonder if it makes sense for me to add in here, collect all the different types and add the types to this as well, or if there's a more yeah. appropriate place that we can gather. I mean, obviously we could crawl the content.js file and we could we could search for those different types, but that adds processing time. And I'm thinking, well, what's the fastest way to do this? I wonder if we should just put it in the m file so you know what types are available. I don't know. Do, do you have thoughts on that? Yeah. So they only need the types only need are needed when we are creating a new new page or new content. Yeah. I think so. So env is probably loaded at every page load. Yeah. 
should it be separate file so it's lazily loaded? Mm, yeah, probably. And I think we're doing a lot of yeah. stuff where we're, we're really making the browser heavy. Um, and I had I have not cared much about that until this point. Yeah. And now we're getting to the point now where it's like I probably should. My whole theory on this stuff was just oh, like, yeah. let's get the proof of concept. Yeah, yeah. It, it loaded in. But now you're right. Like we're starting at the point now where we have enough complication where we're going to start really bogging this down. And even some of the ways that Plenty is doing the the general site generation, I, I worry about too. Like the fact that, and mm -hmm. I don't know your thoughts on this, but like the, the content JS file in general. Um, yeah, it's all the content. It's all the content. Yeah, it's it's like we're loading the whole thing, which and. At the very least, you know, this should be minified, right? Like at some point. Um, but but is it does it make sense? Should these be broken up into separate content files that we lazily load as we need them? Um, probably. It's probably mm. something we should do. And I don't think that'll be I think we can do that um without like breaking everything. Uh it'll just be a, a big change that we'll have to account for. But is that kind of what you think? Like, you know, the ultimate vision of this, we probably should load these as different files. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, it went down. Sites get big. Sites get big. Then it's gonna be a problem. It's, it's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so yeah. So I think that's something that is gonna have to be considered at some point as well. Um, but yeah. So there'll be some reconfiguring of this stuff. But I yeah, I, I. They should probably be JSON files instead of JS files. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's easier to parse. Mm, yeah, that's a good point. Um, and that would be easier for the the build too. It should make that quicker. Yeah. Um, I mean, you really could just copy copy the JSON as is from content to to the build, right? Like it, that could be a quick copy. Content from the JSON. Uh, sorry. So you could yeah. you could like you could really come here and you could copy like basically the content the content that's in the folders yeah. mm. over there. Like it would that would like require no processing yeah <laughs> that would, um so that's that's probably the ultimate mm. idea that we we should be doing so this is probably all yeah it's probably too much right now so we'll have to think through that at some point for sure to to make this a little more performant um yeah but i think it's not a priority right now uh, yep or, yeah. yeah i totally agree it's like get this thing working because i think the whole steam and i've started to see a couple of people who i've chatted with you know recently about the like like yeah. i chatted early on about the concept of this project and they thought it was kind of cool i think they you know some every once in a while they'll interact with something on on like social media like either a, a video or a post or something and i think they're they're like excited that like you can see the vision versus like a complete completely mm -hmm. optimized thing that there's no vi no vision so i yeah. think um I, I like the concept of getting the whole thing working and so people can like feel what we're trying to do um, mm. Cause I think sometimes it's lost in translation, but when you actually use it, you, you, I think you understand like, wow, I'm not managing a server and I'm able to make these updates and change my layouts and those kind of things. Um, I think that's kind of exciting for folks. So yeah, let's, let's push forward with like the, getting the full product experience complete at, at some level and then we'll work on optimizations. But I think, yeah, it's, it's good to know that you're thinking about this stuff. Yeah, but the types could be the different, different file anyways. It could be loaded at every page load, but it's easier to move mm. it to lazy load. Yeah, when it's a separate file. Yep, and so make it like make it like a types.js file, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that shouldn't be too hard. I mean, we yeah we can structure we can we can generate these assets based on our our file structure in any way we want, right? Like we can. Yeah. So yeah, not too not too crazy. Um, cool. Well, I think that's a. Uh, that's probably pretty good. I think we have stuff to work on and we're on the same page with some things. Um, yep. Is there other things that we should be discussing? I'm going to stop my screen share. Did that work? Yep. Okay. Um, other thoughts for the video or should I kill the feed? Yeah, there's just a lower priority stuff that I want uh we discussed previously but it's just it has been discussed already so well do, do you want to anything you want to mention i mean happy happy to go over stuff uh, that talked about. no that's i just if we want to remind what we what we said sure mm -hmm. yeah yeah i think it's always good to, to go back over that stuff sometimes these things 
you know, yeah. they enter my head and then they leave because we're on to other things. So the content types uh, that we talked about in just a moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was thinking the JSON schemas from them for them. Mm -hmm. So it just yeah, I have to think about it sometime later. It's actually oh, yeah, yeah. after the media browser. It's the next priority. But yep. So that and just for people who are kind of coming into this video, so the, the JSON schema thinking about. Okay, right now this the CMS kind of builds fields based on like what we think you might need, but at some point somebody might need to override them and say, no, this is a WYSIWYG field or this is a select list field. And so we'll have to have some kind of mechanism to allow people to specify that. Yeah. And then there's the oh. local write back. Yes. Like development environment stuff. Exactly. And that is so like when you start up your web server instead of you know, it, it should know that you're local. And so instead of writing back to the repository, you might want that local feedback to, to just write locally and that should rebuild and then you can kind of see it in your project yep. directly. So, um, yep, I yeah, I agree. Those things are, are definitely... Uh, future. Yeah. Cool. Yep. Well, we have a lot of exciting things to work on. Um, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll stop the video for now, but this, this has been great.